And welcome back to the Factor Uncensored. Can you afford the American dream now? Now, according to Zillow, home shoppers today need to make more than $106,000 a year to comfortably afford a home. Real estate expert Noel Collier joins us to talk about if this is true or not. We're hearing just this year also, a recent study indicated that $150,000 was considered lower middle class now. And now we get this report, this follow-up report from Zillow saying you can't comfortably live in a home unless you make $106,000. Where the hell are we in this world, Noel? What's going on? First of all, Isaiah, I love the way you say my name, Noelle Collier. <laughs> but let me tell you, Isaiah, I feel like that's a, a, a bunch of BS, or I'll say malarkey in, in this case, and, and here's why. When Zillow does their studies, just like most people that gather data for a living, they are gathering data from a global standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. And so they create this fear for, for future homeowners, right? Because Zillow now has a, a mortgage company, right? They have mm -hmm. every part of real estate that we have a la carte now. So I feel like their goal was always to drive fear of some sort. And that's just not true. You know, Texas is like its own ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I put people in homes every single day that don't make anywhere near six figures. In fact, I just put a couple in a home that collectively their, their income, one made 40,000, one made 45,000, and they're in a home. The issue is, and they're first time home buyers, by the way, right? Got them mm -hmm. in there with less than $7,000 out of pocket. But the issue is, Isaiah, is that no one wants to sacrifice anymore. Mm -hmm. We live in this society where everything is about Sunday fun day, right? Uh, turn up Tuesday, uh, uh, name another something, right? Mimosa Monday, you name it. We live in a culture where people don't like to stay home anymore and make the sacrifices that are necessary in order to be one step closer to wealth building. That one said I've uh, missed to turn up yeah. Tuesday. What is what did that start? <laughs> but back to they, the topic yeah, at hand. <laughs> Isaiah, they do. I mean, we are. That's the culture that we're in, right? You just look around. Like even here in Houston, every five days. I swear there's like a new restaurant that's open. Mm -hmm. It's a new restaurant with the same, serving the same exact food. And a lot of the times they're jam packed from wall to wall daily. People need to stop eating out as much and do like your mama used to say and say, we got food at home. Do you have McDonald's <laughs> money and go buy a house? <laughs> there you go. There you, are you seeing people buying houses now since we've, uh, we're pretty much out of the pandemic. We're still dealing with high interest rates, but have those interest rates stabilized where people can afford houses again? They have, right? So they went from 3% to 8%, which was right uh, crazy. People were losing their minds. Now they've relaxed a bit to what we call a new normal. Rates will never be back to 3% again. Not in our lifetime, Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. So where we are right now, that hovering between that 6 and that 6.5%, that is our new normal. That's interest rates. Interest rates on average, though, are 8%. So 6 to 6.5% 6 is not that bad. And a lot of the time, something that we do over at Noel Collier Group is we scrub the, the market and the data to find out which of those builders are offering some of those lower interest rates. Like there's a builder right now that's offering 2% interest rates, but you have to have a knowledgeable realtor and a realtor that's willing to do the, the pre-work for you being a, a first time home buyer, especially if you are in that less than $106,000 range, whatever this you know, made up number is from Zillow. If you're in the lower end of, of a of an annual salary, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, finding those lower interest rates is gonna make all the difference from you. It's gonna for you, it's gonna be the difference between continuing to rent and purchasing a very nice and brand new first time home. And there were there was recently a trend where we saw people, more people saying, well, I'm just going to rent or I'm going to live with my parents, younger people. I'm going to live with my parents a little bit longer. Are they coming out of that trend, returning to the market to buy houses? They are. And I'm so proud of them, Isaiah. I, first of all, I always tell them how blessed they are that they have parents that they can go to and their parents can be a safe haven for them for them to get themselves together right after college, right? It mm -hmm. allows them to save money. It allows them to catch their bearings. 
And so they're coming out of that in great positions and they have that seven to $10,000 saved to go out and purchase their first home. Also, another thing that I like about the younger generation is that they are not marrying themselves to that first home. They're not emotional about the first home. Mm -hmm. They understand now because there's so much information that's available that that first home again is that first step into wealth building. So wow. it really is just a placeholder for them to sell and move on to the next one and walk away with fifty to $60,000 in their pocket.